All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 18th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. Yes, it's still the 18th day. Uh, I'd like to make a comment before I get on to the subject about uh, Mariupol and the people that are uh, holed up in the uh, Azov uh, Steelworks, the big plant there. Uh, yesterday, the, the Russians gave them an opportunity starting at 6 a.m. Moscow time until 1 p.m., I believe it was, to uh, that if they surrendered, laid down their arms and surrendered, that the Russians would guarantee their lives. In other words, we're not going to execute you because there's a uh, apparently a number of people there that are including foreign mercenaries and... Uh, radical well the closest analogy would be the brown shirts of a certain european country you know a person that was led by an austrian once upon a time uh they see that particular political party used terror fear intimidation and violence to get their ways to suppress their enemies yeah. And they had a lot of support from the industrialists, too. You could say the, the oligarchs, perhaps, of Germany. Now, Ukraine has a government like that, very much like the, the country, uh, that particular country at that particular time. Uh, what you see is not what you get. The only difference is the guy in charge in uh, Ukraine is an actor. He always was an actor, employed by the same person he was employed by when he had his television show. But see, these oligarchs in Ukraine have their own military, too, their own people. And in a lot of places, uh, well, even in the, in the Soviet Union, in the military, they had, um, what did they call them? Political commissars attached to military units. And... The, the political commissar was basically equal to the whatever the commander was, and so he had to give political approval to the actions of the military. <laughs> well, that didn't always help matters. Uh, if you have seen the movie Red October, then you know what I'm talking about. So that was an ongoing thing. Uh, they don't have that anymore because Russia does not have an ideology anymore and not a communist ideology, unlike America, which is an ideology, definitely. Uh, it's getting uglier. The, the, the more I think about it and the more I see, the worse it is in the West, in the United States. What's really going on? And, yeah, I mean, you've got uh, the social media corporations, you know, Facebook, and others. Facebook is simply a tool of the NSA, probably. Or, no, they're probably not owned outright by the NSA, but since George W., NSA and the C all, all the other government agencies can demand access, wide open access. So, But I imagine they simply buy the information from Facebook because Facebook sells information to everybody. So it's a lot easier for Facebook to do the same thing that the NSA was doing anyway, to garner your information and your relationships and your preferences, your interests. That's what Facebook does. So why would the NSA go to a lot of trouble to filter all that stuff out when they just buy it? They don't have to spy on Americans and do things that are illegal. They'll just buy the information from a private corporation that does it, or a public corporation that does the same thing. Yeah... 
How do you think they got so stinking filthy rich? So the, we've got this. Uh, uh, President Eisenhower, right before he left office, uh, warned. Unfortunately, he waited before he left office. That was not a very brave act of that man. Uh, warned of the military-industrial complex, or per more precisely, the military-industrial congressional complex. It's not often quoted that way. So you had these, these interests that were in bed together that uh, grew out of World War II. You had the, the, uh, the manufacturing industries, the arms manufacturers. And you had the military who wanted the arms. And you had the congressmen who wanted to be reelected and to make lots of money and get jobs in their district. So the three conspired together. <laughs> to scratch each other's back, and you had this incestuous relationship uh, that just kept finding reasons to build more and more weapons. And sometimes those needs require a war to use the weapons up so you can build more weapons. And the other problem is, because of this relationship, and because there's black uh, items in the budget, you know, the NSA, the CIA these kind of people, their budgets are black. Nobody has access to it. Uh, even the, the handful in the Congress that's allowed to see some of it, they only see what they're allowed to see. You know, in, in, um, in security, in the government, the uh, security clearances, you can have a top secret clearance or above top secret, but you still only are allowed to see what you need to see to do your job. So, uh, you know, you look at the situation we have over there in Ukraine right now, and we see, uh, what was it, uh, Coons, uh, Senator Coons was out the other day advocating for NATO troops in Ukraine. And you, uh, Coons took uh, Biden's former Senate seat, and the two are tight. The scary thing is that the Congress, the Senate, and the White House only sees the information that the FBI, the national security state, let's broaden it out, the national security state wants them to see. They get briefed. And the briefers tell them what the national security state wants them to hear. That's a dangerous situation. That's a dangerous situation. That was one of the problems with Trump. That's why he had to go. One of the reasons he had to go is because he didn't trust them. Remember that? He didn't trust the CIA. Not that he had a problem with, with necessarily the people at the CIA, just the leadership. He realized the institution had vested interests. He was a businessman. He understood these things. See, these can be problems in corporations, too. People have a vested interest, and they serve themselves and their jobs. What brings benefits to them rather than what brings benefits to the country? Just the way it is. It's what Eisenhower warned about back at the beginning of this incestuous relationship between business and government. We say the same thing in COVID-19. Special sweetheart uh, deals where companies are immune from prosecution and uh, basically get locked in sales. And the, on the other hand, the, gov the, uh, the companies are producing things that, are, that tr come out to be rather ineffective. And then they're forced on consumers by the same government requiring you to use these so-called meds. So it does, it's not just the military-industrial complex. You've got the healthcare con government complex, too. There's hardly anything is so deeply involved in the government other than the military is the healthcare industry. Government is deep in that. Medicaid, Medicare, all these things. Government money, government programs. And then government mandates, Obamacare, windfall for the big pharmaceuticals. 
destruction for small for doctors for individual doctors terrible terrible and they always want more information from you well my experience at, with youtube is rather weird uh qu quite a few i can't remember when uh, you know i had a youtube account and i think once i uploaded a video of uh some geese swimming around in a nearby lake years ago and I, that was it for a number of years and then i decided that i was going to start uh uploading videos that had to do with my primary interest which is jesus christ and his people and the scriptures so i started a channel called thinking biblically and the uh purpose was to uh, examine doctrine and the church and the world from a biblical point of view. How we should also learning to think biblically about things rather than being shaped, our minds being shaped by the world. Well, social media went from a social platform that you could share things on to a way for them to suck up your information to a way for them to condition your thinking, to shape your mind. And we certainly have seen this, starting during the Trump administration, especially, where uh, now I think Zuckerberg has finally confessed to dumping $400 million into the Biden election. Does that include all the special favors from Facebook? I don't know. Anyway, shaping your actions, shaping your minds. George Orwell's 1984 on steroids. You don't even know it's being done to you. That's when it's most effective. When propaganda is most effective is when you think it's the truth. Once you know it's propaganda, you just ignore it. You realize the government's nothing but a bunch of liars. You don't trust people who lie to you. You shouldn't trust people who lie to you. But Facebook, so I, I, I started uploading videos, I don't know, five years ago, maybe six years ago. It's hard with that COVID two years in there, you know, that it's like, uh, how, how long was it before COVID and then after? But they gradually started growing. I've gradually got 100 subscribers and started growing. And then it started sort of taking off. And got up to 500 subscribers pretty quickly. You know, once it started to roll, and it, it, they started accumulating fast. And then it got up to 1,000 subscribers just a couple of years ago. And I thought, wow. Then I noticed something. It hung there. See, at a thought, you can't monetize your channel until you have 1,000 subscribers. And even then, I think you have to get so many views per period of time so so then it, it hung just like a thousand twenty five a thousand thirty five then drop back down a ten then go up a little bit and and i do pretty controversial things among christians i know a lot of people aren't going to like what i say just like there's a lot of people that are christians that don't like what the bible says but it just it why did it go so fast it seemed like from a couple hundred or a hundred up to a thousand. It went quite fast. I mean, I'd get 50 subscribers a month, maybe more. Not, I wasn't seeking to get subscribers. I was just publishing videos pretty regularly, every couple days, sometimes more, sometimes less. But it got up to this, this level, just over a thousand, just hung there. Very little movement up or down. I think, what's going on here? Something, something don't, doesn't smell right. And then at, at one point during COVID, I got a warning because apparently, I don't know if it's something I did or a comment. I think a woman on a, put a comment. She was definitely anti-vax. And I did reply, and I think I put the comment on the screen. Uh, not with, I don't think I gave her name, but... Just, just to respond to it, because I was not anti-vax. See, back then, we were told the vaccines actually were going to do what they said they were going to do. You're not going to get it, and you're not going to be able to spread it. Remember that? Like, Good, wonderful. I'm going to go visit my mother at the nursing home. So I got the one-shot wonder, which turns out to have been better than the Pfizer, apparently. 
Uh, of course, all these things are protected against lawsuits by the government. These are all experimental vaccines. None of them have been fully approved by the FDA. That takes years. And, of course, every time they come out recommending another booster, that's a bundle of money, guaranteed money for Pfizer. Why are the boosters Pfizer, Pfizer, Pfizer? What are they, on number four now? Or is it number five? Who knows? I got the one-shot wonder. That's it. That's all it's going to take, too. If that didn't do it, nothing is. Not with this technology. Uh, because besides, the virus keeps mutating. So the, 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 the original vaccine is not designed for the current virus at all. The viruses keep finding out by random mutations how to escape the vaccines. Uh, natural immunity is much more robust than this kind of junk. Natural immunity always is more robust than any kind of a vaccine, unless you get a vaccine made out of the entire virus, like a, uh, like a uh, incapacitated or a dead virus where you have the entire structure, uh, especially the external structure, for your body to develop immunity to, rather than a, a fragment of a protein, which was really stupid. I mean, we knew that was going to happen back then. I knew it was going to happen. Lots of other people were warning about it. Experts. I'm no expert on this. I just have an idea how things work. It's not difficult to figure out. It's not rocket. Well, rockets aren't that hard to figure it out either. The basic principles, how they work. You don't have to know all the details. Okay, so you can see on the screen there, the uh, YouTube is thinking dash biblically, and Rumble is thinking biblically. Anyway, so I got up to a little over a thousand and hung there, and I noticed I kept getting comments that were canned. They were absolutely identical to each other. Almost every video I'd get a comment from a particular subscriber, and I went to their account, and they were like uh, a blank account. You know, there was nothing there. Now, a lot of people don't have anything in their accounts, but... Ah. <laughs> so I was wondering, is this a bot? Could this explain the rapid growth? Was this a, a stratagem of the uh, YouTube algorithms to pimp your account, to bring you up, to, to get you interested and active in producing material, eventually hoping to get you monetized? See, I had no interest in being monetized. I'm a Christian. I don't do this for money. I don't need to do it for money. I don't have a lot, but I don't need a lot. That's one thing about Christians. You don't have to strive after the world because you don't need it. You've got Christ. What else do you need? So uh, I was beginning to think, you know, they probably want me to get into this monetization stuff so they can make money. So they can use my channel for advertising. I wasn't interested. My account just sort of hung there frozen just bounce up one or two down one or two, 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 two no rapid changes and, but I always seem to get roughly the same amount of views depending on the subject if I name the name of a well-known Christian it might go up you know I might over time get 200 views on something or usually maybe a hundred 125 views here I've got over a thousand subscribers, and a typical video gets 100, 125, 150 views. Something's not right. Now, I subscribe to channels. Now, I might not watch every video, but I usually will click on them, click on that, and see if they've got anything. And then often I'll click on, click on that. I might not watch the whole thing. I might just, oh, I'm not interested in this. But those still count as a view. If you just click on the video and it starts playing, that's a view. So, how can you have a th over a thousand subscribers and your videos are only getting 125 views? Why would they stay subscribed? I began to suspect something. Again, with canned responses. What's going on here? 
is 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 YouTube YouTube is there, are they trying to manipulate content create content creators? Of course they are. In fact, if you go to your uh, your YouTube Studio page, which is what the, you have if you're a creator, th they'll try to give you all kind of instructions and everything else how to get more views. See, they want you to generate more uh, interest so they can make more money. That's what it's about, money for them. But they're also interested in shaping what you do. Now, I could start another YouTube channel and star my female shepherd as the, as the star on the channel, and I'd probably get 40,000 subscribers quickly. Kittens are good. Stupidity is good, you know. All these mindless things. Well, George Orwell, 1984, you want to keep this, the country stupid. Dumb them down. American education plays a large role in that. But especially social media. Is there anything that reduces you to such a mindless state as things like Facebook and YouTube? I mean, sometimes I don't want to do anything and I just watch somebody else do their work, you know? Like uh, somebody fixing a machine or something like that. But it doesn't do anything for me other than, you know, mindlessness. And what do they do with things that are important, like discussing pandemics and vaccines? Censor you. Shut, threaten to shut you down. Not allowed to talk about these things. Not allowed, allowed to talk about what's really going on in the country and what's really important. Can't talk about that stuff. Only the government's allowed to talk about that stuff. And you must conform to what they say. Fat chance. That's not the kind of person I am. I am not a conformist. Nor do I serve at YouTube's pleasure. What's interesting, though, is so I decided, huh, there's something rotten at YouTube besides the censorship. They're manipulating the contract the content creators, too, and they're manipulating the information, I suspect. Your statistics aren't necessarily real. How do you know whether they're real or bots? You don't. You can't know. You don't get the code that YouTube uses. They tell you. They present the stats. How do you know they're actually giving you the truth? You know, they say you got a thousand subscribers, but hardly any of them are active. Some of them you know they're real. Maybe because you've commented on a video over there. And they comment back on one of your videos. They're real. But these other ones, how do you know they're real? You're not actually interacting with them. There aren't that many that actually interact with you, are there? So I went over and opened an account at, at Rumble because they don't have all the censorship. A lot of people were doing that. I think it was about a month ago. And I uploaded, oh, I don't know, half a dozen videos. The same videos I put on YouTube. Now, I ended up erasing my YouTube thinking biblically and just started over with thinking biblically again. Because I wanted to find out what's going on at YouTube. I'm that kind of guy, an engineering background. I want to figure out how things work, you know. So, uh, well, huh. So I've uploaded, I think, four or five videos on Thinking Biblically, the new one. I've got no subscribers and no views. No views, not any. But over at Rumble, uh, you know, I've got a half a dozen videos over there. They're just about, maybe, something like that. And all of them have views. I haven't even figured Rumble out yet. Um, and, I, I, like, I have no idea how you figure out how many people are subscribed to you over there. It's, I just haven't see, seen it, I guess. But, uh, or what channels do over there and all that stuff. Because it was just sort of like a secondary thing. 
in case you get shut down, you know. But I think that YouTube's not so, so much banning channels is they're shadow banning you. It's so like I said, I've posted, I think, four or six videos in the last week or so on Thinking Biblically at YouTube. Zero views. Zero views. Obviously, they're not promoting it. I mean, what were the subjects there? Uh, first video a couple of days ago, Biblical Ignorance on YouTube. Yeah, there was a young guy over there. His shtick is promoting uh, women in ministry more than anything else. He's a charismatic, apparently, which sort of goes hand in hand. The reason I say that is because charismatics are not bound by the Bible. They might say uh, this guy claims to be dedicated to the authority of Scripture, but no. <laughs> no, because if you come to the Bible with pre-existing ideas and you believe in direct revelation apart from Scripture, that's going to affect how you read the Bible. I was in that movement for many years. I know the dangers of it. I never got fully into it because I always held to the Scripture. I realized eventually you can't hold to the Scripture and be part of that movement, not consistently, because it kept going farther and farther away from the Bible. Let's see, I had another video uh, posted up, uh, Don't Fall for a Cheap Grace Gospel. Uh, it has a picture of Adrian, Adrian Rogers. I didn't choose that picture, but that was a response to uh, another, uh, this guy that did, I did a couple of videos in response to this guy, a couple, three, in fact. Uh, name is Faith on Fire. He's got about 2,000 subscribers, I guess. Uh, about a year old or something. Uh, but he doesn't understand Scripture. So, the, the you know, the, so the, this particular issue, I just been doing a few a series on that, and I just posted one a few minutes ago, uh, Women in the Pulpit and the Qualifications of Pastors, just directly dealing with the issues of the Scripture and what the Scripture teaches about this. Uh but I don't really, you know, it might be that I'll start getting views on these, but so far, nothing. It's nothing. It's a little odd. It's a little odd. That would be like a shadow ban if that's something the algorithm's doing. I had a video I put up on the Ukraine situation, and they put a, they slapped an 18-year-old plus on it because it showed a dead body. It didn't show the face. It just showed a person laying there in their clothes, with a white armband on. And I commented on the fact, this was about the massacre in Bucha, that this is not the Russians that did this. This is a retaliatory uh, murder by the Ukrainians coming back in. Because that's what armies have always done. That's what, what thugs have always done. They, they come back into a territory and they will murder anybody that collaborated or... Uh, cooperated with the previous occupiers. It happened in, in uh, countries in Europe in World War II. Even if they weren't murdered, they were, were publicly humiliated and everything else. Collaborators. Many of them were thrown in prison. Some of them were executed, regardless of whether they committed any crimes, simply because they, they collaborated, just like in the United States right now, it's finally, the truth is finally coming out a little bit, but this whole thing with Ukraine is just absolute propaganda. Just a bunch of falsehoods. Just go back and search for stories about Ukraine dating around 2018 and the corruption and the violence of the Ukrainian government. All that disappeared a few months ago. Isn't that Orwellian? Or haven't you read George Orwell's 1984? Yeah, you know, the, the the what do they call that? The Ministry of Truth is that what they, where they revise history constantly? Yeah, that's called YouTube. That's called that's called oh, well, Facebook doesn't actually do so much of that, but it's called YouTube and Google. Yeah, Alphabet, in other words, because Alphabet is the parent company of both. So we'll see how this develops, but I suspect something is really rotten at YouTube. 
and that YouTube is probably getting paid lots of money in order to shape public opinion. Isn't that what advertising is all about anyway? Shaping your opinions, shaping your desires, shaping your quote-unquote needs. And at the root of it, there's one thing that underlies it all. Where is that? Ah, there it is. There's one thing that underlies it all. It is the love of money. Or in this case, it's debt, because it's a Federal Reserve note. It's one dollar worth of debt. The government owes me a dollar. <laughs> and they'll pay it to me in a dollar of debt. See, it used to be a silver certificate. You could go to the bank when I was young, and you could go there and say, I want a silver dollar at the bank. They'll give you a silver dollar. Or four silver quarters. <laughs> Not anymore. Thank you, Richard Nixon. <sighs> yeah. I remember that. I think I had a paper out. And all of a sudden, I was going to be get, getting paid with worthless paper instead of something that you could actually get money or real money with. Okay, so anyway, this is that's my experience at YouTube. It's, I mean, it's, I'm very suspicious of what they're going on. What's going on there? It's just not just outright censorship, but it's it's shaping the content. You know, you could look look at what's trending on YouTube. What is that? What is trending on YouTube tell you about the American people, or at least YouTube's version of the American people? They're a bunch of mindless idiots. That's what it tells you. No wonder Biden's in office. See, you have to keep people mindless idiots. You have to keep the people fearful and in the dark. Then you can do what you want with them. That's what it's all about. How much money is coming in from the media, congressional, government complex, deep state complex. Why don't we, how come the Congress isn't investigating the, the money connections between the institutions of government and Facebook and Google and YouTube? and Alphabet, and Twitter. Why aren't they looking into that? Could it be they're up to, the, up to here themselves in the whole rotten scheme? I think so. The Bible tells us about human nature, and it's not a pretty picture. So when you look at what the Bible tells us about human beings, fallen human beings, sinful human beings, and what they do when they're presented with the opportunities for corruption, you know what's going to happen. When they're offered a lot of this, they don't refuse. Most people don't. Most people take it. They're easy to corrupt. That's how senators and congresswomen get filthy, stinking rich. Not from their salaries. Can't even rent an apartment on what they make as, as Congress people at Washington. But they always leave much wealthier than they came in. Or almost always. I'm sure there are a few exceptions. I hope there's a few exceptions. Well, we'll see. There should be an interesting comparison between YouTube versus Rumble. There's also Odyssey out there. Now, I've been using Odyssey because you can get RT live on Odyssey. I think you can also get it live on Rumble. So if you're interested in finding out like what the Russians are saying about what's going on in Russia, rather than what the American government wants you to believe, what NATO wants you to believe, in fact, you might actually find out a lot of information about the United States there that they don't put up on mainstream media because it's not 
the, the syrupy slop they like to feed you. Things that might actually be important to Americans. You'll more likely to find it on RT. It used to be called Russia Today, but it's not as RT. And there's a number of other channels that you can look at on, uh, on the Internet. Uh, direct websites. RT, you can go directly to the website. You can also go to Sputnik, a uh, Russian news site. Uh, these are all in English. A uh, number of others. TASS, the uh, government official. Uh, that used to be their official newspaper. Well, they had Pravda, too, in the old days. But uh, there was Pravda.ru, too, I believe. Pravda is Russian for truth. Uh, probably more truth there now than there used to be under the Stalinists. But anyway, we live in a fl uh, topsy-turvy world. All of a sudden, if you want freedom, if you want truth, if you want uh, uh, don't want to be manipulated by the government, go to Russia. <laughs> they are not the communists anymore. Like I said, they, they're, they're not running around the world trying to overthrow governments like the United States is. The United States is responsible for what's going on in Ukraine. Deeply responsible. The United States is responsible for overthrowing the government back in 2014, or at least having a big hand in it. As it, Remember Obama and Biden going around the world with their color revolutions? Oh, yeah. Now they want to take on Russia. That's really what it's about. Then they want to go on to China. Well, what they've done is the bear and the dragon decided they need to watch each other's back. Now the United States is going down. The American dollar is going down. The West is going down. The kings of the East are rising. And India, too. And the other countries are looking at this and they're saying, they're looking at what America did, and, uh, along with its uh, uh, NATO puppets, stooges, syncopants, acolytes, I don't know, what's the proper word? Uh, <coughs> client states. That's probably a more accurate word. Looking at those things and say, do we, you know, I, I look at, at, at Sweden and Finland wanting to join NATO. You really want to be slaves of the United States? You want the United States to lock you into a system where you serve the interests of the United States and the United States, the United States industrial, militarily indu industrial complex? Locked into American weapons so America controls everything you do? Locked into the EU? Talk about foolish. You don't want to be your own people, huh? You want to be slaves of others. Well, go to it. You've already invited all the Muslims to come in. Well, the Muslims are going to come in. They'll, they'll say, no, we don't want any part of NATO. They might be the saviors of Europe. Anyway, the United States is not. The United States is the global aggressor now. Hard not to see that. Hard thing to see. Sad thing to see. The United States is not a, a shining tower. It's not a city set on a hill. It's not a lamp anymore. It's become something dark, something evil, because the United States has forgotten God. And the word of God, which cannot be broken, says that every nation that forgets God will be turned aside to destruction. Or, in the King James, turned into hell. Look at the streets of New York City, Chicago, other places. Look at the government. Yeah, it's been turned into hell. Well, God's still on the throne. That's the good news. And Jesus said, when you see all these things happening, look up, for your, your redemption draws near. <laughs> 